Today is July 26th and it's exactly one week after the Microsoft outage happened. Now, unless you have been living under a cave, I am pretty sure you have heard about it by now. Microsoft estimates that around 8.5 million machines were affected throughout the world. Airlines, hospitals and a lot of other industries, including emergency services in America, like 911, were affected because of this. And all of this happened because of an update by CrowdStrike, which had a bug. And it has a logical error. And that's the reason we are creating this video today. We will go over a few things in this video. We will go over the reasons behind this and who's to be blamed. Is it CrowdStrike's fault or is it Microsoft's fault or is it a government fault? Wait till you hear that. We'll also learn why it didn't affect any home computers and why it only affected like industries, big industries. And finally, my favorite part, we'll get into the tech behind this bug. We'll see what the logical error was, why testing is so important. And if you want to be a software tester, it's a great career and companies are spending millions and millions of dollars into that field. And it's still not enough. As you can clearly see, there was a big failure last week. And if it can happen to a big company like Microsoft, Imagine if you're running a small company or just creating a hobby project of your own, how important tests can be. And it's usually something that is missed by fast growing companies and especially by new engineers who do not care about tests and just want to work on new features. We'll go over why testing is so important. Now, before we get into the details, if you are new into this channel, hi, my name is Pranav. We run this channel called Programmer Couple. It's by me and my soon to be wife, Kritika and we create videos by learning new things and then sharing them with you so that all of us can learn together. Now, a fun fact, CrowdStrike is a cyber security firm. And a lot of analysts have said that maybe if we had a cyber attack, that would have been much cheaper than actually dealing with this cyber security firm's bug, which is bizarre to think about. This bug brought the blue screen of death which basically means the computer will continuously reboot and in the end it will get stuck on the blue Windows screen that is infamously known throughout the world. Since this bug happened, I can see that CrowdStrike is down around 35%, which means at one point the company was worth $95 billion and today they are worth around 60. So about $35 billion of obviously short term losses have been occurred throughout the industry for this company. Now, yes, 8.5 million computers were affected, but essentially it's just 1% of all the Windows machine available in the world. Now, imagine what would have happened if this bug actually went into all the Windows machine throughout the world. That would just have been a scenario which I cannot even imagine. Now, according to CrowdStrike, it was a routine update that caused this failure. And Satya Nadella, Microsoft CEO, blamed CloudStrike and said the company was working to help customers bring their systems back online. Now, even though CrowdStrike did release a bug fix, why I'm using the air quotes here is that their fix only stopped this virus or this bug from spreading more. The 8.5 million machines that were affected had to be manually reconfigured and manually fixed. Which means, imagine if you have a university with a few thousand computers or if you are running a company with a few hundred or thousand computers, someone has to manually go to each and every machine, spend 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, one hour, depending on you know their technical expertise and fix that bug one by one. This really sucks, like no one wants to do this and companies really need to have better testing and we'll soon get into that in this video where we learn the technical aspect of this. Now, Apple and Linux machines have not been affected with this update, which is great. And a lot of people were wondering why it didn't affect any home computers. Well, because CrowdStrike is a B2B, which is business to business kind of a company where they require a minimum of 1000 licenses to be bought. So regular users don't have a thousand machines lying around. Therefore, it didn't affect any home computers. It was only companies and especially companies with at least a thousand users or a thousand laptops. CrowdStrike have promised that they will improve their testing in the future. This is a promise that any company can make after any mistake they make. A few months ago, some banks were failing in America and they said, going forward, we'll make this better. These things are easy to say and difficult to implement. If you are a hundred billion dollar company, you are supposed to have tests. You are supposed to not release code with logical errors. And for such a big company, you are simply expected to do much better. And the worst thing is that simple logical error 
caused this doom loop where computers were restarting on their own again and again and no one could solve it over the air. They had to be manually fixed. This is the part I'm really pissed about. Now I want to give a huge shout out to Dave's Garage who is actually a retired Microsoft engineer who worked on various issues like this one while he was working. He has been also covering this and he has been going into the weeds of the technical details on how this bug happened and what you can do to fix it. Now who's to be blamed? Is it Microsoft's fault? Is it CrowdStrike's fault? Or why did Microsoft actually blame the EU, which is the European Union? Let's get into that now. So first of all, it's absolutely CrowdStrike's fault. It's a logical error. They should have better testing around it. I mean, I can have better tests around the things I make and we teach on this YouTube channel. A $90 billion company should have them as well. Finally, Microsoft could have a better onboarding process because this company CrowdStrike had kernel access and why did they have kernel access is another big potential problem, right? Because every time you have a kernel access to a system, you have much more access than a user, which means you could actually corrupt the whole computer and not just one application if something goes wrong, which is exactly what we saw here. Back in the days, even printers used to have kernel access, but because a printer can have a faulty software and there are thousands of companies in the world creating printers, Microsoft eventually moved it away from kernel to user access. So this is important to understand. User access is what we have to a computer, right? We can open applications, we can do some editing, we can create files, etc., etc. But kernel is a very low level system access, which basically allows any third party software like CrowdStrike to have as much control over a computer that the actual creators have like Microsoft. This could really corrupt a system at a low level. And the blue screen that you see, if you didn't see that, it could be actually even more dangerous because your files could be deleted. They all could be corrupted. Basically, when you see a blue screen, that's your computer protecting itself from getting damaged even more. So it's a very dangerous thing to have a kernel access. And Microsoft might have done something to avoid this. Or at least they tried. Back in the day, Microsoft did release an API that would allow companies like CrowdStrike and others to have implementation that would not directly be inside the kernel. But European Union actually blocked Microsoft from doing that. Now, that is the reason Microsoft blames EU and then European Commission strictly denies any responsibility for the massive Microsoft IT outage. Now, it is clearly a failure from a third party's perspective, from Microsoft per perspective, and also failure of most governments being able to understand what actually happens inside the tech world. Now let's get into some technical perspective, what actually caused this issue. I would like to thank Patrick Wardle because he is the one who found what the issue was and shared it on X or Twitter. Now the image you can see right now is an assembly code trying to manipulate registers and memory addresses. Now in this image, we can see that R8 is being loaded with an invalid memory address, which seems to have caused the fault. In the second image, we can see a memory dump of content of registers at the time of crash and the memory addresses are shown with corresponding data. Now the highlighted one is the same memory address 9C8E with a value of 00000008A, which clearly stands out, which might be relevant to the fault described in the first image. From this information, it seems like the program attempted to address an invalid or unmapped memory address resulting in a bug. Now, if you have never seen assembly code before, this might look complicated, but let me assure you, that if you have an unmapped or invalid memory address, it's not super complicated to test it out. You could have basic checks that would just check the value of your variables. And if they are null or invalid or anything like that, simply not call the function. But CrowdStrike didn't do that. They called the function, which crashed everything. And then we went into that infinite loop of blue screens. So it's very simple to actually check in the code where the invalid pointer access might occur. Yes, you might not have worked with assembly code, but I'm pretty sure if you are a software engineer or have been learning coding, you must have checked if the value of something is null, well, do some checks. If this is undefined, do some checks. It's as simple as that. It's not more complicated. This could have been simply avoided by more test and more robust error handling. And this could have saved a company $30 billion and a lot of users a lot of time. And unfortunately, banking and healthcare were the sectors that were hit hardest, in which healthcare lost about $2 billion and banking lost about 1.15. This is unfortunate and simply could have been avoided by testing, which I've been saying the whole video.
Now, a lot of you do not want to be software testers and a lot of good engineers and good developers I have come across also hate writing tests unless they are forced to write tests. And I can promise you, it is like life insurance. No one cares about it until you actually need it, right? These kind of bugs can actually make or break careers, they can make or break companies. This didn't even require, by the way, any performance testing or any other crazy integration test. This simply could have been avoided by a simple unit test and I highly encourage you, no matter what you do, if you're working with Angular, React, Vue or anything like that in the front end or if you're working with Node.js, Java, Python, every single programming language comes with a test suite and I highly recommend you to check them out and start learning how to test things automatically if you haven't done that already. And today we have AI and all the other cool tools to actually help us do all of that. I hope you learned something in this video, you got to know more about why that bug happened and if you did like it, consider sharing it with anyone who you think might benefit or might be interested to know more about the error that happened. And thank you so much for your time, that's the most valuable resource you could give to me and see you next time, bye.